Why would anyone need an electric space heater during an emergency? I'm Sam and I'm a Provident Prepper. A couple of weeks ago I was exposed to somebody who tested positive for COVID and decided to come home to quarantine. Uh, for the first couple days, we, I got these lovely accommodations to make sure that I wasn't going to get my family sick. But two days later, I ended up testing positive as well, and this became my home for that 12-day to two-week period. Um, and this little space here was what kept me warm through that entire experience. So that in this video, we're going to talk about the reasons that it might be helpful to have a little space heater around your house, just in case. Recently, we had some events that helped us understand how important it is to have electric space heaters. So often, when we think about preparing, we are always preparing for power outages. But not all emergencies include a power outage. Sometimes you have a crisis and you do have electricity. And we discovered this when Sam came home to quarantine. That is one of the things that I had never anticipated. But as Sam had mentioned, when he came home to quarantine, we didn't have a place in our home where we could keep him separated from everyone. But we had been building this metal outbuilding in the backyard, and while it wasn't finished, it was enclosed. So we pulled a mattress out there and set up a tent and made some accommodations for him. This also gave us a chance to check out our portable power station and the solar panels. During the day, the solar panels could go out and recharge that portable power station and that provided power for Sam to use inside. And here he has his clean drinking water. That yellow tote is full of different snacks. We did provide him with hot meals three times a day, but that was full of snacks and he had a microwave where he could heat up anything that he wanted. This little spot is actually going to be a bathroom but it was kind of a nice cozy place for him and Sam during the evening when it got cold would wrap himself in blankets in this chair and put that electric heater underneath the chair and then he would watch games on his iPad and things but it was really funny to see him do this because he was all snugly warm in there and he actually really liked that setup when he was getting better and then this is the hand washing station that we had set up for him he did have access to a bathroom inside of our home where he had to wear a mask when he was going in there and no one else was allowed into that bathroom until after he was better. Another time when an electric space heater could come in very handy is during a natural gas outage. They had one in New Mexico and a friend was telling me about it because she lived there at the time. Space heaters were sold out everywhere. You couldn't even buy them online like on Amazon because they were completely sold out because the demand was so high. And she's the one that brought it to my attention how valuable an electric space heater can be during a natural gas outage. Natural gas is different than electricity in that it takes a lot of time to restore it. When the natural gas has been turned off, it must be turned back on by a service technician in each and every home. And it takes about an hour to two hours for that process to occur. And so sometimes you can be without natural gas for a very long period of time. We had our own experience with natural gas rationing a couple of years ago when we had a wildfire. Now this happened obviously in the summertime, but the gate station for our natural gas had to be shut off because of the fire. And we were only allowed to have the natural gas that was in that pipeline, which meant everybody had to ration that natural gas. The schools were not allowed to have gas to cook their food, so they had to provide cold sack lunches for the children. Many of the businesses in our area had to be shut off from natural gas because they used large amounts. This obviously was an economic loss to them and a great inconvenience. This can also apply if you have propane or other fuels that you use for your heating. If those fuels are not available or you are not able to get them for whatever reason, you have a problem. And sometimes power outages occur in the form of rolling blackouts which means you might be able to use your furnace absolutely when the power comes back on, but those electric space heaters can be used when you do have power for whatever length of time that you have it. Another real possibility is that your furnace fails in the middle of winter, so natural gas may be available, but if your furnace is broken, you're going to be cold. 
There is also the possibility that you could power those electric heaters using a generator. Obviously in order for this to happen you will have to have fuel stored and you will have to use this very carefully. Generators cannot be used in your home or in your garage. They have to be used out in the open. Typically you might be using that generator to run your fridge or your freezer or other critical equipment and a heater could be used at the same time. You might use that for a couple of hours and then shut it off for a while. Another way that you can use an electric heater is to keep pipes from freezing. If you have one area of your home where you have pipes that freeze during the coldest part of the year, an electric heater might just be the ticket to keep that from happening. And an electric space heater could help you save money by allowing you to heat just a very small heat area instead of keeping your entire home warm. Electric heaters also come with a set of cautions that we need to observe. One of these is not to overload our circuit breakers. Most electric heaters draw about 1500 watts, which about maxes out one circuit breaker. Another caution is that you need to make sure that you're not using these near flammables, whether that is gas vapors, papers, clothes, curtains, whatever. We need to be careful. You also need to make sure that you read the manufacturer instructions and follow those. Most heaters do come with a tip over switch make sure yours has one. One of the great things about electric space heaters is that they come in all kinds of different sizes, styles, and wattages. Think about what your needs might be and then purchase the right electric space heater to meet those needs. And we encourage you to have two or three at least. This little Lasco space heater is my favorite. I have probably had this for six or seven years at least and it just sits underneath my desk and keeps me warm so that I don't have to warm the entire house. I just warm my little office and it does a really good job. This is what Sam borrowed when he was out in the metal building in his quarantine. And I missed it like crazy. That is when we realized that one space heater is not enough. That as good preppers, we really need to have at least two, if not more than that. This is a ceramic tower heater that I picked up at Costco. It has a few more features than some of the other space heaters. It can be operated with a remote control. It has a thermostat, which most space heaters do have a thermostat, but it's also an oscillating fan. This little utility heater is another option. It has a little more industrial feel to it, but it still has the same functionality. It does have a thermostat, so you can set that to keep an area from freezing. And this is a really cute little heater. The thing that's a little bit different about this heater is that it blows heat out in all directions. So you could put it in the center of an area and it will warm the entire little area. And this is a little tiny personal heater. It's only 200 watts, so it doesn't produce a lot of heat. And it has an on off switch. So unlike the other ones, you can't control the thermostat. You just get to turn it on. But even a little space heater like this definitely has its place. One thing I like about electric heaters is they are a safe, clean option. There's no open flames, there's no fuels, there's no combustion byproducts. They just provide good, clean heat at the flip of a switch. I think often we are in the mindset that when there's an emergency, the power is going to go out. But this is not always the case. Sometimes we will have power. We need to be prepared for both situations. We have some other great videos on YouTube that can help you prepare for a power outage. The first one is critical power outage preps. And in this video, we go through the different steps that you should take to prepare your family for a power outage. Best Heat Sources reviews some of the non-electric ways that you can stay warm during a power outage. And in Grid Down Lighting, we go through an incredible amount of different ways that you can light your world when the power goes out. If you've spent any time watching us, you know that we take all kinds of crazy challenges. And one of the first challenges that we had attempted was to turn off our power in January just to see if we can survive. In this video, Surviving a Power Outage, we talk about that challenge and the lessons that we learned just by turning off our power. Check them out. There are a variety of space heaters that can help you in different ways depending on your situation. We use different space heaters all throughout the winter. And now for the question of the day. What emergency uses of space heaters have you found helpful? Comment below. And thanks for being part of the solution.